my third eye, it's not big enough. It's my third eye, it's huge, you know? So this doesn't really represent it, but all good. I feel so good in this place. I'm not even sure why, but I, I love it. There's not much to do, it's very quiet, but it's just different. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's weird how the roads work on this place. I walked for a long time on a straight line. Then I made a small turn and I was back at the beginning where I was. So strange and uh, actually I needed to come back to the hotel to get my stuff. So I'm back at the hotel again and I walked for I don't know, like 25 minutes in a straight line. And then I make a small, I decide, oh, let me see what's in this road. And I'm back at the same. <laughs> I'm back at my hotel. So I'm over here with, what's your name? Your name? Benjin. Benjin. Benjin Udi. Udi. And he is from Bhutan. He is the hotel, the, the owner of this hotel. Yeah, Golden Leaf Hotel in Darjeeling. He gave me a beautiful room for a, a very cheap price. And now, he just invited me to, to Bhutan and he said I could stay with him in his house uh, for, you know, for free. I am welcome to come and I am so, so happy. Thank you. Well, you know someone from the, the, the immigration, office. immigration office and I wouldn't have to pay the 200 US dollars per day to come to Bhutan. So, <laughs> I'm so very happy with that. So thank you so much for okay, Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do you know how hard it is to get to Bhutan and how long I've been wanting to go there? I only came to Sikkim because I really wanted to go to Bhutan. The only reason I'm going to Sikkim is because uh, it's very close to Bhutan and very similar. And <laughs> I've been thinking how you have to be a very lucky motherfucker to get into Bhutan, like all very rich. I just got myself some breakfast. Got myself some dates. Uh, some coconut juice, not from concentrate, and also some of those tomatoes again, which is a fruit. Uh, and they actually charged me honest price. So over here, they haven't tried to scam me. Paid 50 rupees for one kilo. Above the clouds, my friend above the clouds yeah darling So I just rented a bike. Helmets are compulsory in this area, that's why I have it on. Otherwise I wouldn't. And yeah. So I'm gonna take it for a ride. I'm gonna go to the Tibetan Buddhist monastery, one of the oldest in the world. And yeah, I'm on my way there now.
So I was on my way to the Tibetan Buddhist monastery and I got to this border and they said I can't go through here. I have to go back. So this is a forbidden area, so it's like one of those. Yeah. No, photo no is neither. Hmm? Camera off kar do. So no recording here as well. No, not, not allowed. <laughs> so I couldn't go to the Tibetan Buddhist uh, temple it's one of the oldest Tibetan Buddhist temples in the world it was built in 1800s yeah because the police stopped me so I couldn't go so I'm gonna go to the Japanese Buddhist temple instead I could make my way around and go to the Tibetan one but not this time around I was obviously just on the wrong road but whenever situations like that arise I feel a deep hate for the police and I don't want to feel hate for the police but I feel it I don't want to bear hate in my heart for anyone but it, it arises, it happens so it's something that obviously still needs to be healed but I was, I was processing why it is that I feel why I hate the police and I figured out why it is that I hate them so much <laughs> it's like very often not all poli police is corrupt but we know very well that there is brutality all around the world by the police killings, shootings police are supposed to be public servants but all they do is enforce laws and sometimes enforce their own ways and most of the time, a lot of the time these police officers, they're weak men, very weak mentally, they're unstable and, and they're also very weak physically but they have, uh, they are backed by authority so whatever they do, they cannot pretty much get away with it they can be disrespectful and there's only so much you can do back so, because, you know, if you go over the line, you know, you're going to get arrested, so... Yeah. And obviously there are the good police officers as well, we know that, we don't need to mention that, but there is a lot of brutality and I honestly don't feel, most of the time, I don't feel safe around police officers. So, but that's something obviously I want to heal and I was trying to figure out why it is that I feel that way. And I think I figured it out like for a long time I've been processing this and just now on this road on the way here I figured it out. <laughs> Growing up in school there was those weak boys that they, you know, sausages like with, they can't handle a slap. I remember I had some experiences as a child in school with these boys. There was a boy who would chat shit to me as a child, as a 13 year old while I was in year 9 in school, just moved to the UK. I didn't know anyone here in the UK. I didn't know anyone in the UK. And he had friends, he had lots of friends. And, and he would chat shit. But he was just a little sausage that he couldn't handle a slap. <laughs> and he would only chat shit because he had his friends to back him up. And I figured out why, like the relationship between the two, between the police and, and that experience in, in school. In the same way, there are police officers just like that. And that's why. I hate police so much, but I, now that I'm aware of that, I hope to heal it, I hope to change it, I haven't had that, my experience with the police hasn't been the worst, but I have very little respect for authority, but not so much authority, but rather I have very little respect for corrupt authority, I respect authority, but genuine authority, you know, anyway, we're here, let's go in. Oh, 
देखो सॉन्ट हो गया Yeah, it doesn't serve me or anyone to bear hate in my heart or in your heart for any group of people or any type of organization. And plus, it's not fair to to throw every police officer into one box. I don't advocate for hate, but I do believe that the roles of police officers and especially teachers, teachers, the most important job in the world is that of a teacher school teacher I think that we need to be more selective with those roles especially of a teacher but police officers also like but maybe not in this lifetime maybe not in this world not right now not in this era but in the future at some point we should be very so the job of a teacher should be the most thoroughly selected job because teachers have to learn guide children and have to educate children and young adults. The teachers we have, people who don't know who they are, we have silly heads, you know, airheads for teachers. Right now, that's the reality, but that's something that I hope one day will change. But again, this is only for the most part. We do also have mature teachers and it is true that every experience also serves for your highest purpose so it is what it is right now Yeah, you can take it. Just paid 20 rupees for this. <laughs> Amazing. So I'm here with Denzel Yudin again. 
and he's just given me um, some Britannian bunny <laughs> from for collection because I've never seen. I'm really happy about that because wait, let me put this. Yeah, it's in focus now because I've never seen Britannian bunny before, and maybe I will need it soon. Who knows? So we'll see. So thank you so much for for giving me this. You didn't have to. And I'm, you know, I'm very happy to receive it. Just, uh, I will try to take uh, in my country Bhutan in future, if possible. Then I will try. Thank you so much. Based from my side. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you.